Hello everyone, this is Grace from the Roselle Public Library. Today I'll be reading Chapter 9 of Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Outside, the world had become a formless, swirling mist, with no shapes or shadows behind it, while the house itself seemed to have twisted and stretched. It seemed to Coraline that it was crouching and staring down at her, as if it were not really a house, but only the idea of a house. And the person who had had the idea, she was certain, was not a good person. There was sticky web stuff clinging to her arm, and she wiped it off as best she could. The gray windows of the house slanted at strange angles. The other mother was waiting for her, standing on the grass with her arms folded. Her black button eyes were expressionless, but her lips were pressed tightly together in a cold fury. When she saw Coraline, she reached out one long white hand, and she crooked a finger. Coraline walked toward her. The other mother said nothing. I got two, said Coraline. One soul still to go. The expression on the other mother's face did not change. She might not have heard what Coraline said. Well, I just thought you'd want to know, said Coraline. Thank you, Coraline, said the other mother coldly. And her voice did not just come from her mouth. It came from the mist, and the fog, and the house, and the sky. She said, you know that I love you. And despite herself, Coraline nodded. It was true. The other mother loved her. But she loved Coraline as a miser loves money, or a dragon loves its gold. In the other mother's button eyes, Coraline knew that she was a possession, nothing more. A tolerated pet, whose behavior was no longer amusing. I don't want your love, said Coraline. I don't want anything from you. Not even a helping hand, asked the other mother. You've been doing so well, after all. I thought you might want a little hint to help you with the rest of your treasure hunt. I'm doing fine on my own, said Coraline. Yes, said the other mother, but if you wanted to get into the flat in the front, the empty one, to look around, you would find the door locked. And then where would you be? Oh, Coraline pondered this for a moment. Then she said, is there a key? The other mother stood there in the paper gray fog of the flattening world. Her black hair drifted about her head, as if it had a mind and a purpose all of its own. She coughed suddenly in the back of her throat, and then she opened her mouth. The other mother reached up her hand and removed a small, brass front door key from her tongue. Here, she said, you'll need this to get in. She tossed the key, casually, toward Coraline, who caught it one-handed, before she could think about whether she wanted it or not. The key was still slightly damp. A chill wind blew about them, and Coraline shivered and looked away. When she looked back, she was alone. Uncertainly, she walked around to the front of the house and stood in front of the door to the empty flat. Like all the doors, it was painted bright green. She does not mean you well, whispered a ghost voice in her ear. We do not believe that she would help you. It must be a trick. Coraline said, yes, you're right, I expect. Then she put the key in the lock and turned it. Silently, the door swung open, and silently Coraline walked inside. The flat had walls the color of old milk. The wooden boards of the floor were uncarpeted and dusty with the marks and patterns of old carpets and rugs on them. There was no furniture in there, only places where furniture had once been. Nothing decorated the walls. There were discolored rectangles on the walls to show where paintings or photographs had once hung. It was so silent that Coraline imagined that she could hear the motes of dust drifting through the air. She found herself to be quite worried that something would jump out at her, so she began to whistle. She thought it might make it harder for things to jump out at her if she was whistling. First, she walked through the empty kitchen. Then she walked through an empty bathroom containing only a cast iron bath, and in the bath, a dead spider the size of a small cat. The last room she looked at had, she supposed, once been a bedroom. She could imagine that the rectangular dust shadow on the floorboards had once been a bed. Then she saw something and smiled grimly. Set into the floorboards was a large metal ring. Coraline knelt and took the cold ring into her hands and she tucked upward as hard as she could. Terribly, slowly, stiffly, heavily, a hinged square floor lifted. It was a trap door. It lifted, and through the opening, Coraline could only see darkness. She reached down, and her hand found a cold switch. She flicked it without much hope that it would work, but somewhere below her a bulb lit, and a thin yellow light came up from the hole in the floor. She could see steps heading down, but nothing else. Coraline put her hand into her pocket and took out the stone with the hole in it. 
She looked through it at the cellar but saw nothing. She put the stone back into her pocket. Up through the hole came the smell of damp clay and something else, an acrid tang like sour vinegar. Coraline let herself down into the hole, looking nervously at the trap door. It was so heavy that if it fell, she was sure she would be trapped down in the darkness forever. She put up a hand and touched it, but it stayed in position. And then she turned toward the darkness below, and she walked down the steps. Set into the wall at the bottom of the steps was another light switch, metal and rusting. She pushed it until it clicked down, and a naked bulb hanging from a wire from the low ceiling came on. It did not give up enough light even for Coraline to make out the things that had been painted onto the flaking cellar walls. The paintings seemed crude. There were eyes, she could see that, and things that might have been grapes, and other things below them. Coraline could not be sure that they were paintings of people. There was a pile of rubbish in one corner of the room. Cardboard boxes filled with mildewed papers and decaying curtains in a heap beside them. Coraline's slippers crunched across the cement floor. The bad smell was worse now. She was ready to turn and leave when she saw the foot sticking out from beneath the pile of curtains. She took a deep breath. The smells of sour wine and moldy bread filled her head and she pulled away the damp cloth to reveal something more or less the size and shape of a person. In that dim light, it took her several seconds to recognize it for what it was. The thing was pale and swollen like a grub, with thin, stick-like arms and feet. It had almost no features on its face, which had puffed and swollen like risen bread dough. The thing had two large black buttons where its eyes should have been. Coraline made a noise, a sound of revulsion and horror, and, as if it had heard her and awakened, the thing began to sit up. Coraline stood there, frozen. The thing turned its head until both its black button eyes were pointed straight at her. A mouth opened in the mouthless face, strands of pale stuff sticking to the lips, and a voice that no longer even faintly resembled her father's whispered, Coraline.